Hi everyone, this is Matt Arshambo from DrawingTutorialsOnline.com and this is podcast number 10. Let's just call this podcast Landscape Stuff, okay? So basically I'm working on this uh, scene one, this landscape drawing, and uh, yesterday I did this whole process for members and uh, let me just pull this sheet here up. Basically one of the uh, th things that I, I taught them was how to do compositional shapes. Doesn't that look pretty? And then we use the grid to kind of place stuff. All right, I know I'm like a little shaky over here right now, but you won't be seeing this for long. Um, we did a three value study and now we did an all value study, all right? So basically what I want to teach you guys on this podcast very quickly is uh, this all value study thing is really, really, really important because you make all your mistakes here and you do this like little drawing before you get to the little nuances of the uh, actual drawing itself. Now this process is not for everybody and basically what I'm doing um, is I'm teaching uh, members of drawingtutorialsonline.com, I'm, I'm basically uh, giving them a place to start. Now they get to pick and choose what they like and what they don't like, and they don't have to do this process, but you know, I think that this process is very, very important. So as I'm working on, you know, these trees over here, and as I'm working on the grass, which I'll get to in a minute in this podcast, uh, I'm referring to my roadmap and my roadmap of values of where I'm going to look first, second, and third. You know, this big compositional shape over here. Um, all that kind of fun stuff is really, really important. So do like a little study that's that's the first little tip on this podcast is do a little value study scribble it out pretend that you're an impressionistic painting with your painter with your pencil scribble it out don't worry about detail just figure out where all your values are going to go where the overall shadow and light's going to go and now comes time for the actual drawing i'm doing it much bigger and basically what I'm doing now for members of drawingtutorialsonline.com is I'm, I'm teaching them something different. Last podcast number nine, gosh, that was completely different than this. It was anatomy lesson, uh, the first anatomy lesson of the muscles of the body, muscles of the face. So now I'm talking about how to draw landscape stuff, okay? And the first tip that I gave everybody was the process of thinking and kind of planning out your scene and now getting into like the little details. So the first thing, when you're drawing trees, I love when I break my little pencil point, the first line that I put down. When you're drawing these trees, okay, don't have them go straight up uh, like a telephone pole, very synthetic. You know, you wanna pull every little ounce out of that contour to give this tree some character. And you know, do this short little choppy, kind of stroke with a, with a pencil point and give that tree character. There we go again. And then you can add in character on the other side. Even if you uh, lose an edge, okay, uh, when, I, when I mean lose an edge, like down here I'm losing an edge of the tree into the grass uh, and I'm eventually going to lose some of the edges of this tree into these distant uh, hills I'm going to put there. But you know, you can come back continually and continually reinforce that edge, even though the values are gonna be similar similar over there. Now, the second thing that you can do, we've got shadow side of the tree trunk and the light side of the tree trunk, but you can roll around like a candy cane stripe. The same thing that you do on a figure drawing, you do it with a tree. So rather than just having your lines come straight up, straight up, straight up, looking all parallel, you wanna twist your lines, like maybe the bark on the tree grew like twisted and the tree kind of spiraled up as it grew and, and that just gives your tree trunks more volume. So if you can combine the contour, the edge of your tree making that really complicated and then wrap these lines, these convexes around the tree, spiral them around the tree, that's going to give your um, tree trunks a lot of volume because tree trunks are a problem for a lot of artists. They're just very bland and, and they're very flat and they're very you know stiff because they're straight up and down so i'm looking at my reference photo over there and you know the optical illusion is the further away that you get from that tree trunk the more everything just looks straight so it's my job as an artist to really make it look complicated and to pull um, all these like little nuances out and it just gives the tree a whole lot more character Okay, now another really cool thing to do is once you do the, the edge, the contour, once you do these spiraling, you know, separations of the tree bark, couple of convex lines there as well, 
and your light and shade, now you can come on in and you can do these short, let me see if I can, I don't have my finesse here this morning, I keep breaking these pencil points. Um, you can come on in and you can give me these sh short, little choppy pencil strokes. Hopefully you can see this. Um, let me just zoom in ever so slightly for you. This adds a whole nother element to the tree. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I'm pressing down really hard. Um, and so now you just got to soften this stuff because it's in the background. And the other thing when doing a landscape drawing, I'm basically doing a landscape drawing of this scene from an old historic old Bethpage State Park of these old buildings. And uh, I don't have the whole photograph in this podcast, but you can probably see it if you visit uh, my blog, Drawing Tutorials, on, drawing tutorials Online blog. Uh, or just visit Drawing Tutorials Online and, and click on the blog and, and you'll go and you'll see the photo, the whole photo there. And now I'm doing um, the little post of this fence and the posts are, were really made with old world tools. They weren't made with new kind of tools that you'd get power tools, you know. So everything is not going to be synthetic and straight. It's all going to be organic and kind of crooked. So that's going to give your landscape drawings a little bit more character. And the same thing holds true for these fence posts that hold true for the tree. Now, don't be afraid to lose edges. I, I, I laid down a base over here for my grass. And uh, the way that I'm doing that is with an up and down pencil stroke. And I really came in and I started to do this in this shadow shape which is part of the overall compositional shape that I showed you on that image before. So once I do that for a while, this is going to be a really, this drawing is going to take me a long time to finish. I'll come back in here with my kneaded eraser and I'll pull out, you know, maybe there's like a patch of light streaming through and I can pull it out. Again, real tedious stuff, so I'm not going to get into it too much on this podcast, but I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about. And I shape this kneaded eraser really skinny. And uh, you know, I can come on in, and you go with the opposite lay of the grass. So the, all the grass is growing upright. Maybe some leaves are being pulled down by gravity, so I'm going to pull them down with my kneaded eraser kind of in that fashion. So um, basically, that's the gist of this podcast. How are we doing with time? I, I can keep going with you. So what I'm doing now is I'm on my photo, there's trees back there. I'm going to turn this into rolling hills. So I'm, I'm laying down a base of middle tone because this is a big part of my compositional shape over here. So this is a major layering process and uh, all, all this stuff is kind of all going back in perspective to my vanishing point. Um, you know, again, visit the blog and, and you'll see what I mean um, by the whole photo. I'm not going to be able to get the whole photo in this little podcast screen. Um, so now I'm going to come back and just with these little things of grass, you know, when I taught how to draw hair, this is the same thing as drawing hair. So if you are drawing hair, you're going with the lay of the land, the grass is growing upward, I'm going upward. Now a couple of like little loose strands of like taller grass, maybe gravity would make them sag over and they'd kind of tip over a little bit. That's a great little uh, technique to break up all the upright vertical pencil strokes. And now where this kind of touches the light part of the grass um, you want to still have it soft unless it's it's an area where you really want me to look then you'd have it like a little bit more hard edge um, so I'm coming on in here and this drawing's probably going to take me two days and so far I've been working on this for roughly like 40 minutes this like little section over here and I've got a ways to go so I'm doing a series of uh, landscape drawings starting with a traditional pencil drawing. Um, the next one that I do is going to have a wash base, either acrylic wash or a watercolor wash, and then I'm going to draw on top of that with pencil. And the third one I'll probably do in partial pencil, partial Photoshop, and I'm not quite sure the fourth one what I want to do with that, um, if it's going to be an oil painting or what, but I wanted to do just a, a plain Jane how to draw landscape stuff with a with a pencil point uh, because once you learn how to do it with a pencil point you know then it's so much easier with paint 
in Photoshop and all that because with those types of tools and techniques you can fake a lot more. You can't fake a lot with just one little skinny pencil point and uh, white paper. Uh, I'm working with my traditional color erase pencil on smooth uh, Strathmore Bristol paper so it takes a little bit longer to um, get some it's not graphite but it takes a little while to get some pencil down on the paper so now I'm just gonna gel this into the light and again I, I, a lot of this magic is gonna happen when I come back with the uh, needed eraser so that's where I am right now I uh, I thank you for watching the podcast I'm trying to do a podcast a week so you can get some stuff to watch on your iPod or your iPhone however you wanna uh, use these videos I know that I love watching stuff and listening to stuff on my iPod when I'm in transit going to teach so I'm sure you guys do the same thing thanks for watching see you soon